Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Uh, because I requested so much and I've had so many questions about how to do micro law fishing, I'm going to dedicate this video to, you know, everything that I do in terms of catching perch, roach, you name it. So I'm going to start this out with uh, obviously rod and reel, braid and uh, leader material that I use for catching these fish. Okay, so I've actually gone over tackle and uh, laws and things in like the first micro video that I ever did. But because people keep asking, I'm gonna cover it again and I'm just gonna show you exactly how to work laws, the sort of type of gear you need, everything. Start to finish, how to go set up, pick up the right in correct gear and then just go catch some fish because it's simple as anything. So to start off with, I'm going to uh, start with a rod. This is just a, a six foot, I believe it's a trout rod, uh, but it's a, it's a really, really soft rod and it's rated for a very, very low casting weight. Um, ideally, it doesn't matter what type of rod it is, well, what brand of rod uh, you purchase, as long as it is rated from zero up to anything below 10 grams, but, uh, ideally. Depending on uh, the water that you're fishing, you might need a heavier jig head, so you might want to, to beef it up a little bit to maybe 8 grams or something like that. But this one is a Savage Gear Parabellum CC. It's an ultra light rod, ultra, ultra light even, and it's rated 0 to 5 grams. Um, it's super light, super soft, and it's perfect for getting all the fun out of the tiniest little fish you can catch on uh, the smallest laws going possible. Now, when it comes to reels, you could probably get a 500 size reel, but this one's a 1000, I believe. Yep, 1000. It's a Shimano Sienna. Now, this one is absolutely perfect for this rod. It's weighted so nicely. Um, it doesn't unbalance it or anything like that. It's absolutely cock on. Now, with the reels, because you're using such a small law, it is absolutely minuscule, weighs nothing. Um, every little movement that you put into your rod, it affects the law and it can affect it either perfectly like tiny little adjustments or it's just going to send it all over the place and the fish will have enough time following it so you want a reel with a fairly low um, gear ratio so this one is a five it's a five not one five to one ratio so it doesn't pick up the same line as say using a seven to one the idea for the uh, the slow wind is so that like i said before with every tiny little adjustment in your rod and winding affects the law drastically. So the less line you're picking up, the longer it's got to just slowly twitch its way through the water. Um, you don't want to be, you don't want to be jigging for mackerel like this. It's uh... <laughs> Yeah, so you don't want to be jigging for mackerel. It is sliding little taps of the rod. And with being soft, you can feel every little bump and little knock down the end of the rod. It's almost like it's just one big massive quiver tip. Right, but we'll get into that later. Um, so uh, line wise, this one here is a uh, four strand five pound braid. Uh, it's a Daiwa J braid. Um, the idea for it being five, uh, four strand is it's a lot finer. It's just going to help with casting drastically because the uh, last thing you want is a, something that's a little bit thicker like an eight strand. It's just going to feel like a rope coming through the rod. You'll struggle casting it. It'll pick the wind up like a, like a yacht sail. So um, that's the last thing you want. Regardless of what braids you use, it's always going to drag and drift around in the wind, so it's never a good method for like gale force conditions. Um, but yeah, you want a four strand if you can get well, I know you can get um, lighter braids, so it's probably even better if you get a four strand in even like a four pound braid if you if you really wanted to. I'm sure there's some out there uh, like Japanese stuff that's quite expensive. Now, when it comes to the leader, you can't see that, but it's um. It's a two pound fluorocarbon. And I've attached that to the, the braid. Like I said before, every tiny little detail affects your micro laws in the water. So that's just connected with a, a mono to braid knot. I'll put a link in the description to someone's tutorial on that because they'll do it better than me. And the idea in that is you don't want any swivels or clips on the line because it'll add a lot of weight and drag that, it, make it a bigger profile. It might put a smaller fish off, but it'll also it drastically affect the sink rate and everything that that law does in the water. So if you can avoid that, it's absolutely ideal. <laughs> All right. All right.
down on the business end, that's a uh, size 12, 0.4 gram jig end with a 1.2 inch Polaris worm. Um, I'll put onto these by uh, Mark Foy. He's the absolute master at these micro fish. So if you can see that, that's a red and blue glitter. The reason why I love them is it's such a small profile that all the roach and perch and everything have no issues of getting that in the mouths at all, one bit. Uh, that one's even trimmed down a little bit just in case uh, a small one wants to go on but you can't eat it. So don't be scared to just trim your laws down slightly if you're having trouble with hookups or they're just chewing the end of it. But the idea is super light jig head uh, and that way it keeps up in the water where a lot of the sunfish will be at this time of year. Yeah, generally this time of year, sort of spring and summertime, they'll be on the top and they'll be feeding on the surface on like little flies and bugs and things. So just whipping one of them past the shoulder roach and sometimes you uh, get a nice big greedy one. So now I'm going to run over how to wear your little widget. So we're going to flick the widget out and then uh, hopefully see if we can catch something. But before we do that, we need to teach you how to catch something with the widget. So we're going to use the widget. First things first with the widget, like we mentioned earlier, you're not jigging for mackerel, so you're not doing this. You're not bouncing shads either, so you don't bounce, bounce, stop. You can do because it'll work for perch. But ideally we want to keep it, well, you need to find what layer of the water the fish are feeding in first. So that could be, you've, you've walked maybe 500 yards just testing the depth of water, different areas like whether they're in the edge, they could be in the middle, down on the bottom, they could be up near the surface, in the upper layers of water. So, we're going to start there. And I'm normally, I just come out with these to so and catch roach and things like that. So 0.4 gram jig head. We should have no issues with keeping that law higher up in the water, but it also gives us the option to bounce it on the bottom. So, I'm just going to uh, flick it out and I'll run over exactly how it works. Right then, so first things first, you've got your widget it all rigged up on your jig head. So, we've got a 0 0.4 gram size 12 jig head on our 1.2 inch widget. So, we're going to flick it out. Now, all we're going to do, tiny little movements, we just, you see my hand moving on there. It's tiny little micro adjustments down the end of the rod. Uh, that way, because the law's so tiny, it only takes a little bit of movement to get that law working. Any more than that, you're just coming up and down in the water. It could be hard for the fish to chase. Um, sorry, uh, to keep track of. Bloody wind, man. Hope he's not too bad down, mate. They'll do that again. Flick her across. Wind's pulling it. So let it sink for just a second. And the lines are looped. I'm just kidding. Micro twitches, look. Micro adjustments to the rod. We should be just keeping it up in the water just a little bit longer. But if we wait for the wind, you can really keep that law hanging in the water. Hopefully, I'll stop it a bit and I can demonstrate that. Tiny little movements, it just keeps it twitching on the spot. It's almost like drop shotting, except it's not drop shotting. So, just slightly just the. Uh, you can catch the smallest little perch imaginable on this thing. Uh, sometimes, there's one, speaking at the devil, <laughs> tiny little micro perch. Um, a little tip, if you're getting little taps and knocks, but you're not hooking anything, is when you get an initial tap, just leave it a second. And it just gives the, the, the perch or roach or whatever is just got it in its mouth a chance to actually eat it and get the up down there. Not exactly all the way down, you don't want to be deep, deep hooking them, so you don't want to leave it too long. But you could get a little tap, but that perch is going to win the bait. So you just wait one second, bang, and then hit it. If you've ever seen uh, American bass anglers and say, oh, just got bit, and then they leave it for a, a minute and then crank the hook, it's a bit similar to that because it's just allowing the fish to eat the bait. Um, so there is a shoal of little ones around here somewhere because we just caught one. Typically, when, with the little fish that we're catching, you are going to find big shoals of them, especially this time of year through the summer. Um, July time is probably the best for it uh, because it's this year, there's another one. It's this year's fry that's just growing up and they're just getting big enough to start eating, eating the laws and big, well, bigger baits basically. So, like your one inch laws, they're absolutely ideal for just bagging up on these little tiny things because they're proper aggressive. They just eat and eat and eat.
Right, so I'm going to show you how the law looks in the water. So I've lowered my GoPro down, just going to twitch it around. And what you'll see is there's very little movement at all, just to keep it twitchy on the same spot. But around in the swim. Did you see the little tail flicking around and jigging and whatever, dancing? It's just what the, uh, the roach and perch just click onto when they want it. But that's close enough to the camera. Spot on. Right then guys, since we just had Rose and Jim come through, it's really mucky water up and I can't find the roach now. I really wanted to get a roach for video, uh, or a rud, there's some nice rud up there as well. Uh, unfortunately, it's gone poo brown and they've all disappeared. So, I'm just going to roll some clips of like, how prolific it can be if you find yourself a nice big shoulder, ch uh, not chub, I'm going to say chub then, uh, perch. Because uh, I've had quite a lot on the way down before I started uh, filming properly. Uh, so uh, I roll that clip now and I'll leave you to watch that. And I want to say thank you for watching. Come on, subscribe and don't poo in the bath. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. size loads. <laughs> it's the 800 perch. Whoa! <laughs> that was messed me way up. Thank you. 